Okay, we're back in Boston covering AWS reInvent 2022. This is our second live reInvent. We've done the other ones uh, in between as digital. Uh, my name is Dave Vellante and you're watching theCUBE. Peter McKay is here, he's the CEO of Sneak and Adi Sharabani is the Chief Technical Officer. Guys, great to see you again. Awesome being here in it's Boston. Great to Boston be here. in July. It is. Peter, yeah. you can't be here. Weather's right? good nice. weather, yeah. Red Sox aren't the, good, the but everything else is okay. <laughs> Sox are ruining our summer. <laughs> you know? yeah. but, hey, um, they're still in the playoff, uh, the hunt. You know, right? all you got to do is make it in. Yes. Right? And, and then it's really a new season. Simple. Yes. <laughs> kind of like hockey, but yeah. you know, I'm worried they're going to be selling at the trading deadline. Yeah, I think they should be. I think, it's, think so? it's not looking oh, good. Oh, yeah. you usually have a good angle on this yeah, stuff, yeah. but uh, well, hey. We'll see. We'll go, I got a lot of tickets, we'll go and see the Yankees, at least we'll see a, yeah. a winning team. Anyway, we last talked uh, after your fundraising, yeah. you know, big, yep. big round, at your event last night, a lot of buzz, one of the largest, I think the largest event I saw around here, a lot of good customers there. It was, it was there, a great, so. great time. So what's new, yeah. give us the update, you guys have made some acquisitions since then, integration, yeah. we're going to talk about yeah, all that. Yeah, it's been, uh, a lot has happened. So uh, the business itself has done extremely well. We've been growing at 170% year over year, 100% growth in our number of customers added. We've done six acquisitions, so now we have uh, five products that we've added to the mix. We've the tripled the size of the company. Now we're at 1,300 people uh, in the organization. So quite a bit in a very short period of time. Well, and of course, I, my, in my intro, I, I said reinvent. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, right? reinforce. That's, we'll, yeah, be, reinforce. Yeah. we'll be at reinvent yes. in November. That's but we the are next one. At reinforce. We've done a lot of reinvents, by the yeah. way. You know, so there's a yeah, lot of so, reinvention here. So of course, <laughs> well, you're reinventing security. Right? Yes. So, you know, I try to. I think about when I go to these events, like, what's the takeaway? What's the epiphany? And we're really seeing the, the developer security momentum. And it's a challenge, they got to worry about containers, they got to worry about runtime, they got to worry about platform. Yeah. You guys are attacking that problem. Maybe describe that a little bit for us. Yeah, audience. I mean, for years, it was always, uh, you know, after the fact, production, fixing security in runtime, and billions and billions of dollars spent in fixing after the fact, right? And mm -hmm. so, the realization early on with Sneak was you got to fix these issues earlier and earlier. We started with open source, was the first product that wait, not, then six, six years ago. Then we added container security, and we added infrastructure as code, we added code security, we added uh, most recently cloud security with the Fugue acquisition. So one platform, one view that a developer can look at to fix all the issues through the be from the beginning all the way through the software development lifecycle. So, we call it developer security, so allowing developers to develop fast, but stay secure at the same time. So I like the fact that you're using some of your capital to do acquisitions. Yeah. Now, a lot of M&A is, okay, we're going to buy this company, we're going to leave them alone. You guys chose to integrate them. Yeah. Maybe describe what that process was like, yeah. why you chose that, <coughs> yeah. how hard it was, how long it took. Take us through that. Yeah, yeah I'll give uh, two examples maybe. One on Sneak Codes, which was an acquisition of, of a company that was focused on uh, code analysis, actually not for security. Mm -hmm. And we have identified the merits of what we need in terms of the first security solution. Mm -hmm. Not uh, an ability to take a security product and put it in the hands of developer, but rather build something that will build into the dev motion, mm -hmm. which means very fast, very accurate, things that you can rely on source and not just on the build code and so yeah. on. And we have built that into the platform, and by that our customers can gain all of their code related issues together with all of their ISC related issues, together with all of the container issues in one platform that they can prioritize accordingly. Yeah. Okay, so, so talk more about the, the, the call it the, the, the few, well, yeah. okay. the sneak cloud, right? Yeah. So cloud fugue, the fugue name goes away, I presume, right? Or, yes, it or, does. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you'll retire that and bring it in. Yeah. The brand is sneak, yeah. right? So talk about the cloud, what it does, yeah. what problems yeah. it's solving. Yeah. Awesome, and, and this goes exactly the same as we mentioned on, on the code. We have looked at the, 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 the cloud security solutions for a while now, and what we loved about the Fugue team is that they were building their product with their first approach, okay? So the notion is as followed. As you're, you know, you're a CISO, you have, your pro you have your program, you're looking, you have different types of controls and capabilities, and your team is constantly looking for threats. When we are monitoring your cloud environment, we can detect problems like, you know, your S3 bucket is not exposing the right permissions and is exposed to the world or things like that. But from a security perspective, it might be okay to stop there. But if you're looking at an operation perspective, you need to know who needs to fix, how do they need to fix it, where do they need to fix it, what will the, be the impact if they would fix it. So what we're actually doing is we are connecting all the dots of the platform. So on one end, you know 
the actual resources that are running and what's the implication in the actual deployed environment. On the other hand, we get correlation back to the actual code that generates that. Mm. And then I can give that context both to the security person, the context of how it affects the application, but more importantly, the context for the developer is required to fix the problem, what's the context of the cloud. Yeah. And a lot of things are being exposed this way, and we can talk about that. Uh, so later. this is really interesting because, and look, I love AWS, they do an amazing job. One of the other things I really like about them is it seems like they're not trying to go hard and monetize their security products. Mm -hmm. They're leaving that to the ecosystem, which I like. Yeah. Microsoft taking a little different approach, right? They're yeah, making yeah, yeah. a ton they're of money in security. Yep. But this, 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 this example you're giving, Adi, about the S3 bucket, so, we heard in the keynotes yesterday about you know, reasoning, AI reasoning. They said, we can say, is this S3 bucket exposed to the public? Mm -hmm. They can do that with math, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But you're, what I'm inferring is you don't stop there. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of other stuff that a has to And you, sometimes you have it's to not about. as simple just as a configuration change. Sometimes the correlation between what your application is doing affects what uh, is the resulted experience of you know, the remote user, or in this case, the attacker. You mean like right? the application has access, who has access to the application, is this this, this yeah, chain Yeah, so of this events? propagates. You, yeah. have to, you have to have a, a solution that looks both at, have a very good understanding of the application context, a very good understanding of what we refer to as the application graph, like understanding how it works, being able to analyze that, and apply mm -hmm. the same policies, both at development time, as well as runtime. So there's, there's human to app, there's also machine to machine. Can you guys help with that problem as well? Or is that sort of a futures thing? Or Could you, I'm not sure I understand no, what it's meant. Machines talking to machines, right? I mean, yeah. there's data True. flowing yeah. you know, between those machines, right? It's not just the humans interacting with the application. Hmm. Is that a trend that you see? And is that something that you guys can solve? So at, at the end of the day, there is a lot of automation that happens both for, right. by humans for good reasons, as well yeah, as by yeah, humans yeah. for bad that reasons, reason. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and the notion is that we are really trying to focus on what matters to the developer as they're trying to improve their business around that. So both improves, ma making sure there are no you know, quality problems or things of this kind, but as part of that, more importantly, when we're looking at security as a quality problem, making sure that we have a flow in the development lifecycle that streamline what the developer is expecting to do as they are building the solution. And if every single point, whether it's the IDE, whether it's the change management, whether it's the actual build, whether it's the deployed instance on the cloud, making sure that we identify all that and connect that back to the code. Okay, so if there's okay. machine automation coming in that shouldn't be there, you can sort of identify that and then notify, remediate, or whatever action should yeah, be taken. Identify, identify, remediate, yeah. yep. Yeah, we, we really focus on making sure that we help developers build better products. So our core focus is identify areas where the product is not built well, in a good way, and then suggest the corrective action that is required to make that happen. And I think part of this is the, you know, just the, the speed of the software development today. I mean, you look at developers are constantly, and I just look at Sneak, you're, you're trying to get so much more productivity out of the developers that you have. Every company is trying to get more productivity out of developers. Incredible innovation, incredible pace, get those out, it's a competitive advantage. And so what we're trying to do is we make it easier for developers to go fast, innovate, but also do it securely and embed it without slowing them down. Develop fast, stay secure. So again, I love, I love AWS, love what they're doing. We heard uh, yesterday from, from CJ, you know, a lot of talk about you know, threat detection and you know, some yeah. talk about DevOps, et, et, et cetera, but yeah. I, I, I didn't hear a lot about how to reduce the complexity for the CISO. And the reason I bring this up is, it feels like the cloud is now the first level of defense. Mm. And the CISO is, is becoming the next level, which is on the developer. Mm. So the developer is becoming responsible for security. Oh, yeah. Is that a whole shift yeah. left, maybe shield right, but yeah. the shift left is becoming critical. It seems like your role, and maybe others in the ecosystem, is to address my concern about simplifying the life of the CISO, is that a reasonable way to think about it? I think it's changing the role of the CISO. How so? You know, really, it's, I, I think yeah. it's before it, in, this, in the security organization, and Adi, you should chime yeah. in here, is you know, it used to be I, did, I owned all application security, I owned the whole thing, and they couldn't keep up. Like, I think it's just every security organization is totally overwhelmed. And so they have to share the responsibility. They have to get that 
fix the issues earlier and earlier because it's waiting too long, it's after the fact, and then you got to throw this over the fence and developers have to fix it. So they've got to find a new way because they're the bottleneck. They're slowing down the company from in innovating and bringing these applications to market. So we're the kind of this bridge between the security teams that want to make sure the, that we're staying secure and the development organizations and engineering and CEOs go fast. We need you guys to go faster and faster. So we, we tend to be the bridge between the two of them. One of the things I really love happening these days is that we change the culture of the organization from a culture where the CISO is trying to you know, push and enforce and dictate the policy, which, which they should, but they really want to see the development team speak up. Like, the, the whole motion of DevOps is that we are empowering them to make the decisions that are right for the business, mm -hmm. right? And then there is a gap, because on one end, the CISO is like, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do mm -hmm. that, and the dev teams don't understand how that impacts their business good enough, and they don't have the tools and, uh, and you know, yeah. the ability to address those problems. So with a solution like Snyk, we really empower the developers to bake security as part of their cycle, which is what was done in many other fields. Quality, other things, everything, IT, everything moves into development already, right? So we're doing that, and the entire discussion now changes into an enablement discussion. So, interesting, because you said the role of the CISO is changing. So I see that in a way, like pre-Sneak, the CISO with the cloud is becoming a compliance officer. Like yep. you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. Yeah. And you're, they don't want to take responsibility. You're, you're, to yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. And so you're flipping that equation, saying, hey, we're going to actually make this an accelerant yeah. to your business. So, so set the policy, determine compliance, but make sure that the teams, the developers, are building applications in compliance with your policy. Right, so make sure, and, and don't allow them to do something if they're doing, if they're developing an application with a number of vulnerabilities, you can stop that from happening. So you can oversee it, but you don't have to be the one who owns it all the way through from beginning to end. Or, or get it before it's deployed, so you don't have to go back after the fact and, and remediate it with, you know. But, but think about deploy. They're deploying apps today, I mean, they're updating by the hour, right. where, you know, six years ago, five years ago, two years ago, it was every six to nine months, right? So the pace of this innovation from developers is so fast that the old way of doing security can't keep up. Like, they're built for six month release cycles. This is six hour release cycles. And so we had to, it has to change. Security mm -hmm. can't stay the way it is. So what we've been doing for se seven years for application security is exactly what we're doing for cloud security is moving all that earlier. All these products that we've been building over the years is really taking these afterthought security components and bringing them all earlier. You know, bringing everything. The cloud security is done after the fact. Now we can take those issues and bring them right to the developers who created that and can fix the issues. So it's code to cloud back to code in a very automated fashion so it doesn't slow developers down. Okay, so What's the experience, we all know there's, everybody has more than one cloud. What's the experience across clouds? Can you create a consistent, continuous experience? Cloud yeah, agnostic. agnostic. Cloud yeah. agnostics, uh, development environment agnostic, you know, language ag agnostic. So that's kind of the beauty of Sneak, where you have maybe other certain tools for certain clouds, uh, or certain languages, or certain development environments, but you have to learn different tools, you know, and, and they all roll up to security in a different way. And so, what we have done is consolidated all that spend for open source security, container security, infrastructure, now cloud security, all that spend and all that fragmentation all under one platform, so it's one company that brings all those pieces together. So it's a single continuous experience. The yeah. developer experience, you're saying, is identical. Yes, it's actually one cloud. product. It's entitlement that we are getting. Yes. So you're hiding the underlying complexities of the respective yes. clouds and those primitives. A developer doesn't have to worry about no. them. I call that a super cloud. Super <laughs> cloud, there you go. I love it. <laughs> okay, but, no, but essentially yes. that's what you're, you're building. You're exactly. building on the, on the, as Ed Walsh would say, on the shoulders of giants. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you don't have to worry about the hyperscale infrastructure. Yep. Right, that, you're building a layer of value on top of that. Yes. Is, is that essentially a PaaS layer, or is it, is it, it, can I think of it that way, or is it not, hmm, is I, it a platform? I, 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 mean, I, I would say that at the end of the day, the, the way developers want to use a security tool is the same. 
Right. So we expose our functionality to them in those ways. Mm. If you're using you know, uh, uh, one Git repository or another, if you're using one cloud, or it, we, we are agnostic to yeah, that. You don't it's care, not, right? It doesn't yeah. really affect us in that manner. Right. Um, I want to add another thing about the, the experience and associated with the consolidation that Peter referred to uh, earlier. When you have a motion that automatically assess you know, uh, problems that the developer is putting as part of the change management, as example, you're creating pull request. Now adding more capabilities into that motion is easy. So from enablement of the team, you can add another functionality, add cloud, add ISC, add code, and so on, like that. Because you already, you already made the decisions on how you are looking at that and how you're integrated that into your developer workflows. Right, so it's, it's, already, in, it's already integrated for open source, adding container and IEC is real easy. It's all, you've already done all the integrations. And so for us going to five products and eventually six, seven, eight, all, all based on the integrations that you already have in the same workflows that developers have become accustomed to. And that reduces a lot of uh, work from the company perspective, right? I can ask you about another sort of trend we're seeing where you see Goldman Sachs last reInvent announced a, 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 a cloud product, essentially, bringing their data, their tools, their software. They're going to run it on AWS. At the Snowflake Summit, uh, Capital One announced a service running on Snowflake. Oracle by Cerner, right? Yeah, you yeah. know they're going to be doing something on OCI. Larry's yeah. going to, of course, make them do that. But yeah. the, the, it's, it's a spin on Andreessen's every company's a software company. It's like yes. every company is now becoming digital, a software company, building their own SaaS, and essentially building their own clouds, or maybe, maybe yeah. someday they'll be super clouds. Are you seeing industry come to sneak and say, hey, help us build products that we can monetize? There's it, companies, so first off, I think that kind of the first iteration is, you know, all these industries are becoming software driven, like you said, and more software is more software risk. And so that kind of led us down this journey of now financial services, you know, tech, you know, media and entertainment, financial services, healthcare, now it's this long tail of, of low tech. Yeah. Within those companies, they are offering services to the other parts of the organization. We have, so far, mostly internal. Mostly saying, internal, yeah. other than the global SIs and some of the companies who do that for a living. You know, they build the apps for companies and they are offering a sneak service. So before I give you these, I update these applications, I'm going to make sure I'm running, I'm, I'm, I'm sneakifying those applications to make sure that they're secure before you get them. And so that, now a company like a Capital One coming to us saying, I want to offer this to others, I think that's a, that's a leap because you know, companies are taking on security of someone else's, and I think that's, a, that's not there yet. It may be. Do you think it'll we happen? Do, we do have the uh, uh, threat intel that we, we have a very, a very strong security group that constantly monitors and analyzes the threats, and we yeah, create right. this vulnerability database. So in open source, as an example, we're at the facto standard uh, in the field. So many of our partners, are utilizing the threat intel feed yes. of Sneak as part of their offering, okay? If you go to Docker as an example, you can scan with, with uh, Sneak intelligence immediately out of the gate over there, right? Yeah. And Tenable, Rapid7, Trend Micro, they all use the vulnerability database ah, as okay. well. So right. a lot of financial institutions use it because they had, they'd have seven, 10 people doing re security research on their own. And now they can say, well, I don't have to have those seven. I've got the industry standard for vulnerability database from Steek. And they don't have to throw out their existing tool sets where they have skills. Yes, and exactly. And All right, Peter, you. bring us home. Give us the bumper sticker, summarize, you know, reinforce, and kind of what we can expect going forward. Yeah, no, I mean, we're going to continue the pace. We don't see anything slowing, slowing us down in terms of um, just the number of customers that are, that are shifting left. Everybody's talking about, hey, I need to embed this earlier and earlier. And I think what they're finding is this, this need to re-innovate, re like get innovation back into their business. And a lot of it had to slow down because, well, you know, you, you, we can't let developers develop an app without it going through security, and that takes time, it slows you down, and allows you not to, like, slow the pace of innovation. And so for us, it's, it helped developers go fast, innovate incredibly, you know, quickly, aggressively, creatively, but do it in a secure way. And I think that balance, 
you know, making sure that they're doing what they're doing, they're increasing developer productivity, increasing the amount of innovation that developers are trying to do, but you got to do it securely. And that's where we complement really what every CEO is pushing companies. I need more productivity, I need more aggressive creativity, innovation, but you better be secure at the same time. And that's what we bring together for our customers. A and you better do that without slowing us down. That's Don't the slow us down. To make. Yes. Guys, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. Thanks, David. Always oh, great to great see you again. Great to see you, Adi. Appreciate it. All right, keep it right there. This is theCUBE's coverage of Reinforce 2022 <laughs> from Boston. We'll be right back right after this short break.